Hey guys, hope you're having a good day. So today we're going to go through the recoil only on this mower. It's a Honda GCV 160 engine on top of a Husqvarna HU 700 F push mower. But this engine's pretty much used across the board on all types of equipment. And the recoil on this one, if it's not obvious, uh, has an issue when you go to pull it out. It's weak to return or gets stuck pulled the whole way out. So I'll show you what it's doing here. But if you didn't notice the state of this thing from that clip, this is another one of those machines where it's missing certain major parts that'll stop me from doing a whole video on it to bring it back. But I can at least show you guys a couple things as I try to assess the engine and see if it's good to use on another machine in the future or maybe stay on this one if I end up coming across the parts I need to put it back together. And I do plan to do a separate carb cleaning video on this one as well, but let's get that recoil off and we'll move inside. Okay, to take this guy off, we just need to remove these three nuts, and that's a 10 millimeter socket. And that's it. Let's move inside. Okay, so I noticed as I was walking in here, you can kind of see it's creeping along trying to retract itself in, which is good. It means we don't have a broken coil spring to deal with. And I think if the spring is broken, you can probably get a whole recoil replacement for the price of just the spring. So that's probably the easier route if you open yours up and it ends up being a broken spring. But I noticed the end of this one is really rusted. Might be hard to see that. So for this, we probably have a dirt or rust or lubrication issue where there's just too much friction for this to retract correctly. So I'm going to go the route of pulling this completely apart to clean it versus trying to shoot lubrication in between some of these parts with it still together. And uh, one thing to check while you're in here is your starter pawls. You'll want to make sure that when you pull on the rope that these extend and retract like they're supposed to. So if you can imagine this sitting on your machine, these are the parts that engage with the flywheel and spin your engine over as you pull on the rope when you go to start it up and then they retract out of the way when that engine ends up starting up. So the plan of attack here, I think I'm gonna pull this rope the whole way out and cut that knot um, just to make it easier to take apart without the spring tension. It might still fly apart everywhere after that, but doing it this way will, will help mitigate that. And uh, it'll also kind of show you guys how to replace the rope on one of these. So kind of a two for one. So I'm gonna pull this out We'll cut that and let it retract itself and we'll start pulling it apart. Okay, and I think this is reverse thread, uh, T25. So it's actually righty Lucy. Yeah, look at all that. And the rust on the spring will stop it from actually gliding it along itself too and, and create friction too, if not only these surfaces stopping it from moving that way. So this is gonna spring everywhere, I think. Yep. <laughs> okay. All right, so we gotta clean that. We gotta clean these two parts and this too. All right, well, to clean this spring, what I usually do is use some Scotch-Brite or some uh, steel wool 
with WD-40 and I move along the surface like that to kind of clean off the rust and any dirt and then also lubricate it a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and I'm going to get these cleaned off probably just with some soap and water and I'll bring you back when we're ready to reassemble. And we're back after I clean these things up and they turned out pretty good. Um, I probably will shoot some WD in these pivot points before putting uh, this one back together. But everything's clean, which is what you want moving forward here. The spring did not clean up as good as I thought it would. Um, but I did get all the rough rust knocked off of it and it is smooth. Um, to do that, I did a combination of fine grit sandpaper, some uh, steel wool, a uh, Scotch-Brite pad and some WD-40 and just went along the spring to clean it off. And uh, you want it to be smooth if it's this bad. You want it to be smooth. One, so that you can kind of rewind it because the way you do that is you hold it and then pull it through and then continually wrap it around sm smaller and smaller until you can fit it into this OD. And uh, the second one is while it's on the machine and it's sitting in this, it has to glide along itself. So if there's rough spots, it's going to catch just like it was before we started. So I'm going to get this thing wound up tight enough to fit in here and I'll bring you back when that's done. It's just going to be a lot of me pulling on this and uh, wrapping it around smaller and smaller. Okay, we've got that spring put in there and just be patient with this. It takes a while to get it in the right size and then you have to make sure that hooks in the right spot here. And you want it wound this way because it'll have to line up with the hook here. And I'll show you that in a second. But I'm going to shoot some WD on the plastic parts that contact each other before I put this together. So what we're going to do is this side here, that little point needs to slip inside of this hook so you can see it you can see it from inside the hole just slip that on there and we're already winding up way better than it was before yeah okay this piece goes back on And then the screw. Remember reverse threads, so this is actually left to tighten. Okay. And the paws are shooting out right, so we're all good. All right, one thing to note before we go to wind this thing back up and put the starter rope back in, there is such a thing as too much lubrication on this. Uh, you do want some in there between these parts so they move free, but too much will start attracting dirt and it'll start acting like sandpaper and kind of wear these parts out. So you definitely don't want to gob it on there, but you do want some in. So we're going to wind this thing up. We're going to make sure that we know where the starter rope hole is, which is right here. And here's where the rope exits. So we're going to wind this up till the spring stops. And we're going the wrong way. Okay. Okay, so the spring stopped. And the holes over here, we need to line it back up with this. So we're just going to release it to that point and stick a screwdriver in here to hold it. All right. So now with the rope, if yours was broken, um, you're going to obviously want to replace it with a new one. But since this one's in good shape, I'm going to reuse it. But you definitely want to burn the ends to make sure it doesn't fray like that and kind of just almost make a needle point on it so you can feed it through through that hole like that and then make your knot
And I just do a typical square knot with these. I haven't found a reason to do anything more, but you want to make sure it's strong. Okay. Tuck that little tail in there. Take our screwdriver out. Let it retract in. So we're good to go. Let's get this back outside. All right, guys, well, to reassemble, we just need to drop this thing on. Make sure your studs are lined up and get those three nuts put back on. Ten millimeter socket again. Awesome. Okay, that's it. Hopefully that helps somebody out. Um, if you're interested in seeing if I can't get this guy running, next video is going to be a carb cleaning video. Uh, this Honda actually's got the auto return choke lever instead of that heat actuated auto choke system like are on the newer ones. But this recoil was kind of the first step in being able to do that, and I figured I'd make a separate video for those who are just interested in that. But yeah, thanks for joining me on this one, and I'll catch you on the next one.